Okay, this tutorial here is our last one for section 3.6, graphing of quadratic equations from standard form. And in this case, we're going to look at a negative example for A, and we're also going to look at an example where x squared is less than 1, meaning that you, in the previous tutorials we did where it was greater than 1 and equal to 1. So we're going to do the same method we did when the x squared component was, or a coefficient was, larger than 1. In this case, it's going to be the same method. It's just going to give us some different results. So what we have here is our example is y is equal to negative 1 half x squared plus 4x minus 5. So again, we have to take out the negative a half. And we want to do that with the two uh, terms that have x's in them, x squared and x. So half take a negative a half out. So that leaves me with x squared. And what do I need to multiply by to get positive 4 here? Well, I need a negative 8x. If I multiplied negative 8x by negative 1 half, I would get 4x. Okay, so that's what I need in there. And then I just leave the negative 5 out here. Okay, so that's the first step is to take out that factor with the x squared, and then complete the square. In the brackets there. So half of 8, negative 8, half of negative 8 is negative 4, squared. So that is equal to 16. So I'm going to be combining 16 into that bracket part, part there. So add that 16 in here. Positive 16, because negative 4 squared is positive 16. Close the brackets, put the 5. Now, you have to be careful here. What did you actually add to your question? Well, you actually added negative 1 half times 16. So that's what's going to have to be taken out here. Negative 1 half times 16 is negative 8. So you have to add 8 out here. So don't forget to multiply... 16 by what's out there, and this is negative 8, so take the opposite number out here. To, so since it's a negative 8, we have to add 8 out here to make this equal to 0. Therefore, add 8. Okay, so we have to do the opposite of that. So that usually, if you have a negative sign out here, you're going to add here. And if it's a positive sign out here, you're going to subtract there. So that's a key, a little key to remember. And it's half of whatever was in there, right? So it's half of 16 is 8. So that makes sense. So now we'll complete our, our uh, vertex graphing form here. So take the x minus 4 all squared out there. And then combine these two to get plus 3. So then we can see, oops, forgot the negative sign here. Very, very important. I don't forget that. So now we can see our points A is equal to negative 1 half, P is equal to 4, and Q is equal to 3. So we can start our graph here. And I'm going to move this up again into the field of view so that we can graph above. Uh, it, this one's going to go downwards. So. I'm going to start my graph up here and go down. That's the area where we'll be looking in this case. And how do I know it's going downwards? Well, I know it's concave down because A is negative. So in the other two tutorials that in this section where we were graphing, we both had them going, both of them went upwards. So this one's going downwards. Oops, I need to leave a little more space there. Let's just... Because I'm going to start with my vertex above the x-axis. So let's just ignore that line there. My apologies. And apologize for this screwed up line there. X is going to be there and my y-axis is going to be here. 
So I know that my vertex point is going to be 4, 3, so 4 and 3, so right there, my vertex. So let's just put 4 and 3. And let's put in my axis of symmetry, which is x is equal to p. And we know that it's going to open up downwards because it has a negative a value. And we also know because this is less than 1, a is less than 1, it's going to be a wider than normal parabola. So we can expect that. So what, we're, what we should do now is we could find our x-intercepts here to get our two points, or we can find our y-intercept. In our case, it's much easier to find the y-intercept. So we're going to do that. y is equal to negative 1 half times 0 minus 4 all squared plus 3. So in this case, that's equal to negative 1 half times 16 plus 3. So negative 8 plus 3, and that's negative 5. So y-intercept is negative 5. So we can go uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 downwards and put our y-intercept there. So we know we've moved 4 from the axis of symmetry here, so we'll move 4 this way, and we can get our second point here. Now, if we want to get the x-intercepts, just to kind of check our results to see what they would be, we can do that as well. So if we plug in y is equal to 0, into our equation here. And then we have to simplify this equation. So let's bring the 3 over. So negative 3 Let's multiply both sides by negative 2 to cancel out the halves. So that's to be 6. Oops, I was going to put a plus sign there. Minus 4x minus 4 all squared. And then let's root both sides. So this will be plus or minus the root of 6. Why is it plus or minus? Well, because negative root 6 times negative root 6 is 6, and positive root 6 times positive root 6 is also 6, because it can be two answers there. And that's going to equal. And then finally, add 4 to both sides. So our x-intercept, we have two of them, plus or minus the root of 6 plus 4. So adding 4 to both sides. So if we change this into a decimal number so it's a little bit easier for us to graph, this turns out root 6, if you uh, put it into the calculator, is about 2.45 or about 2.5. So this will be x. Let me just check my field of view, make sure I'm not flying right off that. So x, the x-intercepts would be plus or minus 2.5 approximately plus 4. So plus 2.5 plus 4 is 6.5 and negative 2.5 plus 4 is 1.5. So 1.5 and 6.5 would be about 1.5 would be about there and 6.5 would be about here. So now we have a really good graph we can draw in here. Or a parabola or a quadratic equation here and we can see that it is wider than normal and it is going down and we have our points there so we can label this out this is our uh, negative one half x squared plus four x minus five that's our equation and here's our axis of symmetry x is equal to in our case four and there's our vertex, which we already labeled. So that concludes our section 3.6. And in 3.7, we'll be looking at solving some problems using the quadratic equation.